everybody, it's Ben and Beta, and it's been a while that I've had some of the footage shot for this, but I've been waiting for the opportunity to make this video, and I'm really excited about it. And it has to do with the rack that I put on the Tacoma. It took a long time to kind of figure out what I wanted to do. Misty and I looked at many different types of racks, and when I went to Overland Expo, I spent a lot of time looking at the different rack companies, and there are a lot to choose from in this area. But one of the ones I wanted to look at was from a brand called Kuat. And Kuat is kind of a cool brand because they have been doing a lot of things in the bike space for a long time, and they make really good quality products. They're based out of Missouri, which is fantastic, not too far away from here. And they came out with a new product called the Ibex last year. And the Ibex from Kuat is a fantastic rack because it's gonna give us the versatility we're looking for when it comes to our rack. We can run it in a mid-height, we can run it in full height, we can put a bunch of different accessories on it, some of which I'll talk about in this video. And coming out later this year, Kuat's coming out with a panel system which would completely enclose a rack when it's at full height, meaning you basically have a topper and it locks on both sides and in the back and you can open up all three sides. That's pretty cool as well, something we might try out in the future. So once I saw this at Overland Expo and I saw some of the other information that was coming out about this enclosure piece that they were gonna do in the future, I got pretty excited about this product because Kuat makes really good quality products and it looks really good in the mid height and the full height and they have a lot of accessories for the product as well and they're gonna have more as time goes on, which is pretty cool. So once we chose the Ibex system, we had to wait to get the truck and that came in early March, as you know. But before that, I reached out to Kuat and just asked about any kind of partnership opportunities that might be available. And they have this thing called the Ambassador Program, which they accepted me into, which is pretty awesome. And what that means is they actually sent me all the gear that you're gonna see in this video, including the rack itself. So I just wanna thank Kuat for choosing me for this program. I'm hoping I can do them justice over the next year, making lots of different videos on the rack and the different accessories. But this is the first one, so you're gonna see install on this and then sort of my first impressions about the Ibex rack. It's really important to note that while they did provide me with all these things, this is the rack system we would have purchased regardless. I have all the links in the description if you wanna pick up one of these products from Kuat, or if you wanna go with one of their bike racks or whatever. So definitely check that out if by the end of the video you think this is something you definitely want to put on your vehicle. The other thing that's important about the Ibex racks is they have them for multiple size vehicles. So you can get everything from a mid-size truck all the way up to the full-size truck, and they work on pretty much all the models. And they have a fantastic tool on their website where you can actually outfit everything to see what it's gonna look like before you even buy anything. And I found that tool to be really well designed, something you should definitely check out if you haven't yet. So once I got accepted into the program, a few weeks later, they shipped out the products and uh, we'll just check out what they all sent to me right here. So first of all, we have the bed rack there and I got a new belt to try out from Kua. So that's kind of cool. It's along with the pin and uh, we got some stickers. We've got the grab handle. We've got a bunch of the T-nuts. We have the antenna mount for the radio. A bottle opener, because that's important. Third brake light kit. Then we've got a uh, mid-size molly panel kit. We also have the front molly panel, which you can see underneath here. Narrow mollies, so we can get some access to the one side. And then you've got the, the bigger molly on the other side. But uh, I'm excited to get started, get this set up, show you how easy it is actually to install. And it just goes into the T-channels on the Tacoma. So basically we'll be install installing in these areas uh, and then on top of the bed. And again, we're gonna be running mid-height to start, but in the future we might go full height. All right, then it came time to install everything. And initially Misty was gonna help me with the install, but she unfortunately threw her back out. So I had to kind of do everything by myself. I would generally recommend more than one person helping out, especially if you're what I would call mechanically inexperienced, which is what I am. I would not say that I'm not mechanically inclined, I'm just mechanically in inexperienced and I haven't used some of the tools that you'll see in this video, which did cause me some problems. I don't think there's anything wrong with the product that Kuat makes. I think it's more of an issue of just lack of experience in putting things like this together. But I did run into a few problems and I will outline those as well. So one of the things I do wanna point out is everything that comes from Kuat is packaged very well. As you can see in the video, the box of the Ibex rack system was pretty beat up, but everything was in pristine condition. Everything was still in the box. Everything's gonna come with a user guide where you're gonna be able to scan a code and get the PDF version of the install guide, which is awesome. And that includes any security bolts and keys that you would need like for the rack, which we'll talk about later as well. So everything's packaged amazingly well. And that also I think shows a little bit into the quality and the time that they even thought about just the packaging. 
So let's talk a little bit about installation. First, if you look at any of their partner sites, you can have this installed at one of those sites. So you can look at the website and find a place that's near you if you don't wanna have to worry about installing this whatsoever and putting it together. If you're a do-it-yourselfer and you wanna do it yourself, like I decided to do, all the equipment you really need is in the box. Although I would recommend that you might use an impact wrench because they do give you an impact wrench tool, which is very helpful. And then it's good to have a ratcheting wrench like, like this one. I'll put a link to some of this stuff in the description if you're interested for that kind of thing as well. I did end up breaking the ball off on the end of this. It's rated for impact wrenches. And the reason it probably broke is just, again, my inexperience with some of these tools and using some of these things. Basically, I don't think I was keeping it very straight as I was trying to get it torqued down using my torque wrench. And the torque wrench I was using was not the one you're seeing here. It was one from Tecton. I actually returned those because I just found them very difficult to use. I made a couple of mistakes with them, which again, we'll talk about in a little, a little while, and ended up going with the SATA one, which is digital. Even though it was set at the right torque, basically because of the length of this, I was at kind of a weird angle, and I think it busted because of that. Once this broke, I needed to go to Harbor Freight, which is right down the road for me, so it didn't take too long, but it did prevent me from finishing it in one day. And I picked up this set here. This is a metric set, Pittsburgh. These had no problems, and I didn't break them at all. And these are definitely impact rated. I would say they're probably a little bit better built than what came in the box. But again, all the tools you need do come in the box. You just have to be aware of not breaking them and being careful with them. And if you have experience, you probably won't have any issues at all. They also provide you with just regular Allen wrenches with the ball on the, on the end. And this is a security version for one of the security bolts as well. Basically, if you have some of these tools, you'll be fine. I think you could probably get away with not having the torque wrench, though they do provide you with the specifications for what you should torque all the bolts down to. Those are some of the things you might want for the installation. Another thing I didn't do that I wish I would have done was put a blanket or use the cardboard from the box to set everything on because that would have helped me prevent any scratches. It looked like I had scratched it, but once I kind of cleaned that up later on, I don't really notice those anymore. So it's not a big deal, but so if you're new to this, just maybe put something down on your garage floor as you're working on it. Other than that, honestly, installation was very simple. The directions were easy to follow. They mark everything really well about which bolts go where, what you're replacing things with. One of the things I had to do was each one of the hoops is set in the full height position when you receive your Ibex. And we wanted to run it in the mid height. So I had to take the middle piece out of all four of the hoop ends. Once that was finished, it was really easy to connect the ends to the middle pieces to create the hoops. That was no problem whatsoever. Up until that point, having one person is not a big problem. It gets to be a little bit more difficult once you start putting the cross members together, just because they go in at a little bit of a strange angle. But I set it up against my tire and I was able to get both of those in with no problem as well. Once that happened, you just kind of tighten everything down. You put in the support pieces that go underneath and, and that's pretty much it. The rack is done. So once I had finished putting a graphene coating on my vehicle, I was ready to put the rack on. I didn't film this, which is unfortunate, but I was able to do it by myself. Once the rack was all together in the mid-height position, it only weighs about 64 pounds. So I basically got in the middle between the two support pieces and I was able to lift it up over my head and set it on the vehicle. But before I did that, I measured out the width between each side of the bed. If I hadn't done that, it wouldn't have been wide enough to fit. So I first measured that out and then widened up the Ibex system. I just made sure that I was at least gonna sit on top of the bed. Then in the next section, you're basically securing it to the bed itself and you get all the hardware you need for either a rail mounted system or just a straight up bed without rails. So everything you need is in the box. I had rails and I used the rail system. This is the first time I used any kind of T-channel system, but I figured that all out pretty easily. And once you did one, everything else was easy after that. Once you put the rack on the bed and you put all the clamps on, you leave them loose so you can kind of adjust things a little bit. And then you torque them to the specs that they specify the manual. And this is where I ran into a problem as somebody who doesn't have a lot of experience with these types of tools. With a Tecton torque wrench, I had both foot pounds and Newton meters, and you're supposed to tighten things in Newton meters here, which is totally fine. But I got a little bit confused and I set it to pound feet instead of Newton meters. I over torqued several of the bolts on the bed rails and that actually rounded some of them off. So I'm gonna need to replace them. And these are security bolts as well, which makes it even worse. But I'm hoping when I go to 4x4 Colorado, they'll be able to help me get those out. And I have new ones to put in, so hopefully it's not too big of a deal and they can help me out with that. I don't really have the tools to pull something like that out. I tried a couple different things with rubber gloves and whatnot, just didn't work. If you're wondering how long it took me to install it, it was about an hour the first day before I broke the part, and then about an hour and a half total between putting the rest of it together and then getting it on the truck later in the week. It was about two and a half to three hours for me. Again, as somebody who 
as inexperienced with doing something like this. So those were really the only problems I had. They were self-cost, just pure inexperience. Anybody who has any experience putting something like this together and using these tools all the time would have absolutely no problem and probably get this done, honestly, in about an hour to an hour and a half. If you have two people, even quicker. After that was finished, then I put on some of the accessories. I went with a full molly panel on the passenger side of my vehicle. And on the driver's side, I went with the, the smaller molly panels. On the driver's side, I might put my Rhino traction boards, but I have to get some mounts for that yet. But basically I can kind of do whatever I want. There's a lot of different options because they're molly panels. So those were the accessories that I installed as of right now. The other one I'm gonna use is this antenna mount for our GM RS radio. And 4x4 Colorado is gonna help me route the cabling for that so I don't have to mess up my truck further due to inexperience. Some of these other accessories I won't be able to put in unless I do a full height. So the, so the grab handle definitely requires full height and so does the front molly panel. The third brake light can be installed in either the mid height or the full height. So I might install that yet too. As far as what it looks like, I think it looks pretty fantastic on the truck before the tent's even put on. I'm excited to add a bunch of different accessories to this as we go along, but the installation of this was really very easy and the product quality here is, is really, really good. Even the tools that they give you for free, they're pretty good. Are they as good as what you might find in the hardware store? Not quite, but they should be good enough to install everything if you know what you're doing or you've seen this video so you know what to look out for. The quality of the product really kind of blew me away. Everything just had a nice heft to it, yet it wasn't too heavy. And that's another reason why I chose the IBEX system from Kuat, was I wanted something that wasn't gonna just weigh down the truck. A lot of the systems that I saw at Overland Expo looked really cool, but they were very heavy. But this system being both light and being able to hold 300 pounds of dynamic weight is pretty fantastic. Let me throw up some of the specifications of the IBEX rack here so you can kind of take a look at what that looks like. But it has a pretty high load capacity and the 300 pounds of dynamic weight are more than enough for the tent that we're gonna put on top of there, plus any accessories we'd be adding to the rack. So again, I wanna thank Kuat for choosing me for the ambassador program. I'm excited to be a part of this and I can't wait to make more videos and memories with this rack system. Links to all the products I used throughout this entire installation will be in the description. Many of those are affiliate links and if you click on those, you don't pay any more, but it does benefit the channel. And in some cases, there's even a discount code with some of the items as well. So if you use those, that's fantastic. In place of that, if you can like this video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't, share out the channel or this video with people you think might be interested in it, that would be helpful too, and I would really appreciate it. But overall, this rack is like the transformer of racks, and it's just so well built. I think anybody who buys one is gonna be very happy with it. And Kuwait's gonna to continue to build out this ecosystem with more accessories and different ways you can use this rack, which is pretty awesome. So let me know in the comments what you think of this rack system. Let me know what questions you have so I can make more videos and answer those questions for you. I'm excited to create more content in and around this, but I definitely wanna know what you think and what you wanna see. So please leave those comments. All right, so that's it for the installation video and sort of first impressions of the Kuat Ibex bed rack. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to live your life in beta and we'll see you next time.